T minus 40 minutes. Start final open loop FTS test. Roger. LCCLH. Go ahead. Top 50, step 620, Centaur, LH2 at 96.2%. Topping started. Roger. Perform Centaur, LH2, fill and drain valve cycle test. Roger. Perform Centaur, LO2, fill and drain valve cycle test. Roger. Atlas LO2 at 99.6%. Roger. Cycle Atlas LO2 fill and drain valve. Roger. Perform Atlas Airborne LO2 vent valve functional test. Roger. And for the team on Net1, this is DLC showing complete through step 620. CLHLC. Go ahead. Centaur LH2 fill and drain cycle test complete. Roger. I'll see the CLO Centaur LO2 fill and drain valve cycle test is complete. Roger. Perform Centaur SRV and LH2 SVV cycling tests. Roger.
This is Atlas Launch Control, T minus 35 minutes and counting. NASA's tracking data relay satellite constellation has evolved over the years. The following video that we're going to see tells the story of TDRS, the network that enables exploration. In the late 1970s, satellites such as the Nimbus 7 satellite relied on NASA's ground stations located around the world to provide a communication network. This ground-based network could only provide communication over 15% of the satellite's orbit. With its ever-expanding orbiting fleet of satellites and manned space flights, NASA had to increase the coverage and develop an improved way to track and communicate. In 1983, NASA launched the first of a series of new communication and navigation satellites that would rely less on international ground stations and provide continuous coverage. Tracking and data relay satellites, TDRS, are a network of geosynchronous communication satellites that work in conjunction with two ground stations. Today, NASA's fleet of spacecraft and launch vehicles, like the Tropical Rainfall Measuring Mission, TRIM, can communicate and navigate with the help of TDRS. This interaction between TDRS and the spacecraft is a series of complicated signals that guarantees that every Earth orbiting spacecraft will have nearly non-stop coverage. The International Space Station, ISS, routes voice and video communications along with data through the TDRS fleet. The Hubble Space Telescope also utilizes the full capabilities of TDRS. TDRS supports the Hubble's real-time interactions with the ground systems, allowing observers to make small adjustments to its observatory system. TDRS provides the Earth observing system of satellites, such as the Aura spacecraft, with low latency data relay and navigation data. The TDRS network sends all of these data streams and voice communications to either the White Sands Complex in New Mexico or the Guam Remote Ground Terminal. Guam then transmits the data it receives to White Sands. The White Sands Complex then relays it to the end user at their mission's operations centers. As long as there's space exploration, TDRS will be working side by side with spacecraft and end user, providing continuous connectivity for navigation, data, and voice communications. T minus 32 minutes. T minus 31 minutes.
This is Atlas Launch Control, T minus 29 minutes, 35 seconds and counting. We have one remaining hold coming up. That's a 10 minute planned built in hold that uh, will be coming up in uh, about uh, 25 minutes or so at uh, 851. We're going to look now at some time lapse of the rollout of the Atlas V to the launch pad yesterday, which occurred at about 1022 in the morning. LC ALO, go ahead. Step 640, Atlas LO2 fill and drain valve cycle test is complete. Roger. Atlas airborne vent valve functional test is complete. Roger. Perform POGO suppressor charge. Roger. <laughs> 